In this video, I'm going for my first solo ride. I'm going to a beef noodle place in Kluang and also to explore a cafe in an area called Palo, which is the northwest of Kluang. So I'm going to share with you the pros and cons of going for a solo ride and also the basic things that I prepare on this trip. Finally, we got our Peak Design handphone mount. So I'm going to install this on my R90 first before I head off because right now, the R90 doesn't have a handphone mount, so... One thing I like about Peak Design, right? It is like Cardo, it's magnetic, it's so easy. You know, this is way too easy to use. Just like that. So what I always bring right is always a tire repair kit and this Xiaomi pump which is so important on any other trips that you are going in Malaysia or even for a long road trip overseas always bring these two for those who are using tubeless tires definitely bring spare tube Ah, yes, charging Alright Woohoo, my first trip, my first solo trip. Alright, let's go. Please don't be so crowded. Please don't be so crowded. Okay, looking good, looking good. Still too early to say. So here's the start of the jam. I think it's still okay. My handlebar is a bit wide, so I think I better stick to one side. This is my first pit stop after Woodlands checkpoint. If you all guys watch uh, Bikers and Bike first episode, this Patron. The toilet is approved by Mark's Royal Bard. <laughs> the first con right of solo riding right is I want to go toilet right, but then nobody look after my stuff. How? No choice what? I have to carry everything to the toilet. <laughs> Onwards to the beef noodle place which will take me about one hour plus. To me the most important accessories on my bike ride would be this water bottle holder. It's always good to have a bottle of water if you are stranded. So to me, this is very, very important. I think there was a time during the early days uh, when I started doing touring, right? Then uh, I got stranded, I think, on a small road. Didn't have any water with me. The whole group was very thirsty. It's always good to keep a bottle of water with you. Put in a top box. If you don't have a top box, have a water bottle cage. That, that will really help. Just exited 244 and after tow, turn right to Kluang. To me, the biggest pros of riding solo is that uh, you get to ride in your own pace. So you don't feel pressured to be flipping up the leader or you feel like, you know, you're very far back and you have to catch up with the rest. As and when you want to stop, you can stop, you know. You can do your own things, own time, own target. I think the biggest problem for most people that doesn't want to ride solo, including myself, back in the days is that uh, the anxiety of you know the motorcycle breaking down and you're stranded and you're all alone i think the biggest fear for most people is you have a flat tire that's right carrying a tire repair kit and a xiaomi air pump right is very very important if you have a leak or you have a puncture you can patch it on the spot and you can still continue going so that really gave me a lot of confidence of riding solo if you are so used to riding in the group right so being a solo rider, there is one con also that I noticed is that, you know, you have no last rider to warn you about any any fast coming vehicle coming from the back and you have no lead biker that tells you any road hazard in the front. I have never ridden solo before, so this is the first time I'm riding solo. I've started touring since 2008 and uh, it was always with a group of people. I mean, riding in a group of people with formation, you know, give you the confidence that if you are stranded, there is always help just around you. Riding solo has a lot more perks. When you say you want to go on a solo ride, a lot of people will like question you like, huh, you crazy, I go on a solo ride, why you have no friends? Ah? Actually, it's not really about the friends thing, whether you have friends or not. Solo riding, right, is also a kind of a way that you love yourself. You take care of your mental health. If anybody have a chance to go for a solo ride, I would say really go do it because the freedom is really there. I, I feel there is no constraint or whatsoever. I think everybody reason for riding solo is very, very different. If you guys are watching this, share with me what is the reason of why you want to do solo riding. 
and also if you know of any pros and cons please add on in the comments below based on the gps i'll reach the beef noodle place 10 minutes before 10 so i'll slow down my pace a little bit more see a group of riders versus solo rider all bikers are friendly no matter you ride a bmw ducati it should be like that we should wave to each other be courteous to each other yeah that's what riding community should be about when you see a truck like that do not go to the do not cut them look at that that's what i mean this is one of the tips during a filter lane try not to squeeze them by the side who are you that's what i mean you this isn't the beef noodle you guys are expecting right I deliberately choose something that's off the radar Yen Ki So I think I'm early They are still not open yet So I'm just going to chill outside For new riders, bike security here in Krang I think it's still okay And somehow it's still so early in the morning Usually there's space outside the shop house Where you can park your motorcycle So not to worry and uh, as I'm eating, I can enjoy the view of my bike also. <laughs> so this is handmade. Uh, it tastes like a, in the Chinese we call the rat's tail, lao su fen. So it is soft and very very small in case you all ask right it's not that i eat very little because i i scared of food coma little so one tip when you're on a solo ride try not to eat too much because once you have food coma there is nobody that is going to entertain you on the road so you have to keep yourself awake but one thing for sure the meat soft and juicy very savory for the meat so you see it's pretty empty right, it's because the crowd is not here yet They are usually targeting the lunch and the dinner crowd one thing I also realized, right, when you do solo riding, you don't look so hostile, you know, because you are just one person. Then you get to talk to the local people, you know, for example, you know, the, the owner of this place is so friendly, so happy and like so bubbly, you know. The grandfather, the forefather, came in 1930s and started doing this. So it's been more than 80 years. Will you ever actually thought of talking to the local people here, like the, the business owner and all this kind of stuff? So these are the things that I find that only when you do solo riding, they are more open towards you. You agree? Now I'm going to the next place which is the cafe about 25 kilometers away which will take me about 26 minutes. The first two years of my touring from 2008 to 2010 I clocked about uh, over 100 kilometers on my FZ1S so that was the most hardcore touring life that I have for the first two years of my class 2. Initially when I first started touring there isn't a communication set that you know that we can interact within each other within a group so we use hand signal. So times have changed. Intercom for a group ride is so important. For solo ride, I didn't choose a helmet with a comms because uh, I just want to have some time to be alone, be quiet, just listen to the exhaust, feel the vibration of the bike. It might sound kind of lame to most of you, but I feel this kind of a me moment is so important. So 2008, I started touring on my FZ1S. And after that, I changed to a T-Max thinking that, you know, I might want to take a break from the two years of hardcore touring. And shortly, less than a year, I changed back to a GS because, you know, I still prefer a, a higher CC machine for touring rather than a 500cc scooter. No, don't, don't get me wrong, the T-Max is really a very good bike, just that the maintenance is pretty high. So after that, you know, the rest is history. I got a GS for 10 years. After GS, I changed to Africa Twin and early last year, I got this bike, the R90. The reason being why I got the R90 is because I really do miss the boxer engine. So this twin cam boxer apparently is the best boxer engine. Reliable, talky, and it has enough stock speed. 
When I started touring during my 20s, at that time, me and our group of friends, we were always chasing about top speed. As we mature, I think speed isn't that important anymore. Slowing down, enjoy the moment, looking around the surrounding. I mean, the environment is really very different from Singapore. So why, why rush? So take your time, look at the surrounding. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Get in the moment, experience this. Life is just too short. Now, I'm sure that all you bikers would definitely will have friends who have passed on during motorcycling. Be it their fault or not their fault, but you know, things do happen. Be appreciative of the things around you that you have. Each of us have our own timeline. We do not need to compare to our peers or whatsoever. Today is quite a good weather, so it's not that hot. I just enjoy this phase of riding. And uh, okay, I'm just gonna stop talking for a while now. So on the way there, left and right are all residential houses. It's like so quiet, so peaceful. So there's a train track below here and they're surrounded by plantations. I already feel that the air here is a lot fresher. <laughs> I'm here. I wonder where I can park. Can I park here? I think I can. It's pretty safe here because there's basically nobody. So quiet. I think they have quite some popular people here that visits them because they have some photo frames around mm. Let me show you We have uh, our home Singapore artist But you can tell right, the pictures is very old See, it's very safe I'm sitting just across there I have my eyes on the bike My eyes looking safe this place has a uh, lodging as well, so they call it the Mingsu, like a homestay. This is the main entrance. Amazing! And they have an alfresco area. But it's just too hot. A plantation founded at Palo since 1961. So their specialty is this two coffee, which is the wild kivet. It's a kind of cat I guess that you know that poops up the beans and that the cat certified that the beans is the good ones so each one cup is 58 ringgit apparently one is a male and one is a female so I believe Sheng Gong means male and this is the female the female is 58 ringgit and the male is 188 ringgit per cup other than that so this is the rest of their car coffee beans so I'm getting this honey I can't drink coffee without milk it's too bitter so I also try their most popular, which is the cheese bread. This place is very quiet. I don't know why. Maybe I'll ask later. But the interior deco is very nice. Feels very lush. Mmm. It's definitely not Starbucks or coffee bean. The coffee flavour is very strong and it's a bit more sour Ooh, cheesy mm. She's the owner of the place here The plantation of coffee has now become an oil plantation and it's actually down the road Very nice landscape Oh, uh, yes, Saturday and Sunday. And then sometimes it's a puppy holiday. Saturday normally I will open until 8 or 8 30. But Sunday normally 6 to 6 30. Then why Monday to Friday not open? I working. Oh you working? <laughs> uh? This is coffee. Coffee, then where's the mango steam? No, coffee. Oh coffee. <laughs> oh, they look the same to me. <laughs> oh this is mango steam. Uh, this is coffee. Yes, all coffee. This is coffee, the flower. This is a coffee flower. Mm. This is coffee. Oh, this is coffee. So, this is color. You mean so, you want to sell it? This is a coffee. 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 This is a <laughs> I, I don't dare to eat <laughs> This green part dry under the sun and then they roast it So that's where you see the, the coffee beans 
Then after that, you grind, and then that's where you get your coffee. So this is the coffee machine which is still in operation. Okay. Oh. Also, it's actually the same thing but small and big. Oh, good. Dun dun, this is 150. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, oh, this is also balcony. Ah, this is two one zero. Wow. Legit. I think it's quite good. Relax. That's all for this morning solo ride. Would I do this again? I think I will. Actually, I kind of enjoy riding alone, but not too often. Nah. I still miss riding with my friends. So riding with friends is still fun, but riding alone is also fun. Riding alone, I get to talk to the owners of the restaurant and this cafe as well. So it doesn't matter if you ride solo or you ride in a group. As long as you had a good time, that's the most important. Ride safe. I'd like to say a big thank you for those who have watched until this point. So if you'd like to support this channel, remember to head down to triple3.com. There's plenty of merch for you to buy. Thank you guys for supporting Triple Tree. If you like what you see in our channel, please like and subscribe. I'm Winston and see you on the road.